Hello, uh, welcome to lab number four. Uh, in today's lab, uh, we're going to measure the fresh probability of conflict. Okay, so uh, first of all, about the lab report. Uh, this lab report, together with lab report number five, uh, which is compressive strength of conflict, uh, you're going to combine these two lab into one group report, uh, which means uh, every lab group will submit a single lab report. So, okay. The due date is November 16th for Monday group and the November 18th for Wednesday group. Okay, so you have uh, more than one month to finish this. Okay. Uh, the goal of this lab is to get hands-on experience on how to mix all the raw materials uh, based on a mixed design, uh, which we did early this week. Okay. So we mix material together and we cast the concrete. We also measure the slump and also the unit weight of the concrete. Okay. The phase procedure shows here. First of all, we weigh the raw materials uh, based on our uh, in-class mix design. Okay. Uh, for 1.5 cubic feet of concrete. Okay. And then uh, we mix the concrete. Uh, the procedure is first we need to damp the inside surface of the mixer, uh, make sure uh, the mixer will not uh, absorb water from the uh, raw materials. And then we add coarse airway and about a quarter of a mixing water. And then we start the mixer and we slowly and stand uh, same man and remaining uh, three quarters of water. Then we mix for another three minutes and stop the mixer, uh, wait for three minutes rest. And then we do the two, two minutes final mixing. Okay, and after that, we take the unit weight, uh, which is pretty similar to uh, the bulk density of the coarse LV, but uh, we just measure uh, the raw weight for fresh concrete. Okay, uh, the procedure is listed here uh, in the textbook. And also we measure the slump of concrete, uh, which we also discussed earlier uh, in previous lecture. And then we fill uh, 12 to around 12 to 12 cylinders, okay, uh, which is four by eight inch uh, in size. We fill the cylinder with uh, fresh concrete and uh, consolidated. Okay. The next day, we're gonna demote the cylinder and we put the cylinder in a curing bath. We cure the concrete, okay. And then the next step, we're gonna check the strength of concrete at seven days, 14 days, uh, 21 days, and 28 days. Okay. Uh, discussion why slump test is important uh, because it gives us the idea of the workability. Uh, although the slump test is not a real test for workability, it's the consistency test, but uh, we can have an idea of uh, the flowability of a concrete. Okay. And how will you adjust the mixed design if the target slump is not the same as the design slump? Okay, so next, let's look at the video demo from Riza. Hello, everybody. Today, I'm going to explain how we could measure for the fresh properties of the concrete, the slump test and the unit weight of the concrete. We just follow the instruction that I've uploaded in La Lima. It is something like this. So you have the title that says fresh properties of the concrete and then just follow the instruction. Make sure that in your lab reports, just follow the instruction that I've uploaded generally for you know, preparing the lab reports. But first, before you start, make sure you're, you're just uh, following the safety protocol. Be careful about your eyes, so wear goggles. The mask, not just for coronavirus, for your safety, because we are working with micro powders, with cement, with silica fume, fly ash in the lab, and we don't want to, you know, have them in our lungs. And then cover your body as much as possible in, uh, you know, Holmes Hall, in material lab. You must wear, you know, cover shoes, and it is preferably wear uh, a pants, and cover your skin as much as possible, because Concrete is an alkaline material. It's gonna, 
you know, irritate your skin. So if you could uh, cover your skins, you're going to be safe. I've just, um, you know, read the uh, instruction one by one and just follow the instruction and let's get started. So number one says that weigh raw material according to the mixed proportion. You learn in 375 that how you could prepare your mix design for your desirable concrete. For example, according to my numbers here underneath this instruction, I have number eight chips that I have right over here, over there, sorry. So three, 33 pounds of this material, and then 3F that is over here, three, 33 pounds again, and basalt sand 94 pounds, cement 31 pounds, and mixing water 24 pounds. It is expected to have uh, three inches for this lump, and uh, expected unit weight is gonna be 3,805 as the unit weight of the concrete pounds per cubic yard. Okay, so I'm gonna start with uh, switching on the scale. This one is a portable scale, and I can, you know, change the location easier. Don't forget to write down the numbers when your containers are empty and then tear your scale. For example, here, my container weigh in pound is 1.80. You can write it down in your reports. Make sure that um, do not round, uh, round up or round down your numbers. Be accurate in your lab reports. And then when I make sure that I have this number, I tear it. So the scale, uh, you know, shows zero, zero pounds. And whatever I add to the bucket is gonna be on the screen. Okay, I'm gonna grab my bucket and, uh, you know, start with sand, for example. The basalt sand should be 94 pounds. So one bucket might, be, might not be enough. So I can use two buckets here make sure that I grabbed enough of aggregates. Let's see the number first and then continue if you want more. So the scale shows minus 1.80. It means that including the weight of the container it should be zero and then showing the number that we want. So right now we have uh, 43, maybe add up to something that is easy to calculate. Maybe 50 pounds for this bucket. And then 44 pounds for the second one. I need to add gently. So it is, yes, so right 50, so 50.00. Now put it aside. Then I need 44 pounds more. So I missed weighing my bucket. I need to redo it. Empty the bucket. Weigh first. I need to zero the scale. Put the bucket on. So 1.75 for this bucket. And then zero. And one more time, don't forget it. You can easily forget this step and just mess them up. Let's see if we have 44. It's 
so it is right 44. You can see it if you don't believe. So 44 in this bucket, 50 in other ones. So 94 total for my sand. And then I'm gonna grab this, make sure that I don't forget to weigh my empty bucket one more time. So it is 1.80, seems that we have similar buckets. 4 preparing your mix design, you need to measure for the moisture content of the aggregate because we discussed in the class that it is very important. The mix design is going to prepare uh, based on the aggregate in SSD condition, not in, uh, you know, a stockpile condition. So what we need to do is grab uh, some samples of the stockpile and then put it in the oven and then, uh, you know, measure how much of it evaporates to, to see if we are below the SSD condition or above it, if our aggregate is in dry condition or wet condition. I need a little more. It should be 33. It's 33.00. And then for 3F. Again, weigh the bucket. It is 1.75. Let's see if we need more or less. So it is 36.90. This. Okay, so write down 33.05. So it is, it is okay. It shouldn't be right on the number. We can be a little bit off. That's okay. And then the cement should be 31 pounds. I'm using different buckets for the cement. Just make sure that uh, your bucket is totally dry because you know that cement and water likes each other to react. I can take the portable scale a little near to my cement bag. And again, weigh my empty bucket. It is 1.60 pounds. We zero it. So
You might see some uh, lumps, lumps of cement. It shouldn't be hard. If you press it by your fingers and it turn into powder, that's okay. If not, it means that your cement already hydrated and you shouldn't use it. Just dump it out and use another bag of cement. But my cement is okay. They just compress and... So it is 31.00 for the cement. Just need water. 24 pans of water. Let's bring another bucket for my water quickly. So again, weigh my bucket, it is 1.85. And then re-zero the scale. And then make sure that I'm weighing the right amount of water. I think it was 24 pounds, just double check it. Yes. So I already weighed my number A, 33 pounds, 3A, 33, puzzles and 94, cement 31, and now the water should be 24. Four point zero five for my water. So all my raw materials are ready now. Coarse aggregate, fine aggregate, cement and water, all we need for normal concrete. And now what I need to do, just follow the next step according to my instruction and then dump them one by one in the mixer and then prepare the concrete. Let's go to the mixer now. Okay, mixing time. So we have all uh, materials, raw materials, coarse aggregate, fine aggregate and the water is uh, cement ready to be mixed in the mixer. So as the next step it says that for mixing raw materials in the mixer, we should first damp the internal surface of the mixer. So the reason is that uh, all mixers typically is the internal surface is dry and when we introduce the raw materials inside it, the dry surface of the mixer is going to absorb the water, some amount of water that we have not already contained and then uh, change our mix design. We couldn't get the desirable work workability and just uh, need to one more trial before use it in concrete elements. So what I need to do is just introduce a little water and dump it out. You also don't want to introduce excessive water so I can dump it out. Just make sure that it is damp. And then start the mixer. Because it is noisy, I'm gonna explain it, uh, you know, before it started and then turn it on. So what I'm uh, gonna do is uh, pouring my coarse aggregate, that was number A, 3F all together, and one, one fourth of the water to make sure that uh, the surface of the coarse aggregate covered with water first and then introduce the sand and cement and the rest of the water. And then I need to mix it for three minutes and then two to three minutes rest for that and then another final uh, three minutes to make it ready. So I turn the mixer. Okay, I turn the mixer off and wait for two to three minutes to make sure that 
the water is going to be absorbed by the ingredients of the concrete and then mix it one more time for three more minutes. Okay, we wait two to three minutes for the concrete to rest and then I'm going to start it on and then mix it for another three minutes. Okay, the concrete is ready and uh, for the next step, I'm going to test the concrete for the slum to make sure that I have the enough workability and also the unit weight of the concrete. So uh, I'm going to take a wheelbarrow, dump all the concrete in it and then go for the next step. Okay guys, the concrete is ready and uh, I just want to make sure that you don't forget to uh, damp all the molds that you're going to use including the slump cone and the pan underneath and also for the unit weight again I need to damp it first but I don't like to have the excess of water in it just, just make sure to dump it out. What I'm going to do for the slump test so as you can see we have a cone like this I'm going to pour the concrete up to one third of it and then run it 25 times and for the second layer, two-thirds of the cone, again, vibrate it, and then fill it up. And once I'm done, I flat it, and then take it out to measure for this lump. But uh, you need to make sure that you stand on your cone, because uh, when you pour the concrete inside the cone, it's going to come up and we don't want to this happen to us Just rot it uniformly all around the cone and make sure that we compact it well. And the next layer. For this layer, we need to make sure that we are writing correctly. So one third of the cone was over here, and I need to penetrate one to two inch here. Just, uh, you know, grab the rod in a way that makes sure to pen penetrate a little bit to the previous layer. And the last layer. You need to pour the concrete a little in higher level. And then again, the two third was here and we need to penetrate a little bit to the second layer. Just grab the rod like this. And make sure that you are not under the level. Then make it level. Once you're done, 
just make sure to dump the excessive concrete and gently pull it up. So uh, we want to do it gently and vertically because we don't want to hit it once we get it up. And then we can put it upside down like this and then put the rod and you can see we have zero slump but the expected uh, slump was three inches the reason is that I didn't use the whole water so I just uh, want to see the difference between using and not using the water so if I use the whole water I'm gonna get higher workability. I'm going to introduce the water a little more to the mix and just try it one more time to make sure that we have enough of slump. So I'm going to get back to the mixer and add the water. Okay, I added uh, all the amount of water into the concrete. We typically don't do this. I just want to show you the difference uh, between, you know, adding the water. What is the role of water in the concrete? We don't like to have, you know, much more water inside the concrete, but just because of the workability, we need to add more and more water into the concrete. Otherwise, we cannot work with it. It is uh, super, you know, hard to work with this type of concrete. So once more time, I'm gonna test it for the slum test. Okay, when you've done with the third layer, again, you need to gently take it out and then measure for the slum. And when I, you know, put it upside down and then put the rod on it, the measuring tape here. So uh, you know the initial height of the cone was something like this. I just need to measure the difference because I want to know because of the workability of the concrete or better say consistency of the concrete it goes down when I pull it out. So I can measure this. So here is three inches but in the middle I have four inches so we can uh, make the average so I just hit the cone but before I measured it so one number was three inches another one was four inches and then make the average that is three and a half inch and uh, for the next time trial I know that the amount of water should be a little bit adjusted, so I introduce more than enough water because the target slump was three inches and I got three and a half inch. I need to adjust the water next time if I want to, you know, got right on the number. The next uh, test is gonna be the unit weight of the concrete that I'm gonna show you how. I need to bring the scale a little closer and show you the procedure. So you can use the same concrete for this purpose. All we need is a container with a, you know, pre-specified 
volume. So I know that the diameter of this container that is a cylindrical one is 8 inches and the height is 11 and a half inch. So I can calculate the volume. The right procedure for calculating the volume of the container is just weigh by weighing the water that could be fit in it. So all we need is that uh, put the container on the scale, fill it up with water, and just make sure that there is no uh, bubbles on the surface and the container is full. So all we need is just uh, fill it up with water and just you know, move this plate, this plastic plate like this to make sure that it's full of water and the water is level and then gently take it out and then weigh it. But for now, you just need to calculate the volume by knowing the diameter that is 8 inches and the height of it that is 11 and a half. So I just need to damp it with water. You can write down the number and then I'm going to re-zero it. So the weight of the container is 13.00 pounds. And then all I need to do is uh, something similar to the slum test. It means that I need to pour concrete in three layers and then stroke it enough. And then the second layer and third layer, make it flat and then weigh it. So I forgot to re-zero it. I did it one more time. So this is the reason why it's going to be helpful to know the exact number. If you forgot this, you can just simply subtract it. But I'm going to re-zero it to make sure that I don't make a mistake. Just pull it aside because my concrete is this one. need to vibrate it well to make sure that I have filled all the corners of the bucket and then the second layer So as you can see, I have water side and the aggregates on the other side. The one, you know, bad part of using extra water of, uh, you know, inside the concrete is we have bleeding. And the other bad thing is you never should have stopped the mixer before using your concrete. So you mixing, mixing, mixing and concrete. And then from mixer that is rotating you're going to use your concrete you never leave your concrete with this high water cement ratio aside and uh, it's gonna you know happen something like this and the last layer And again, for the last layer, make sure that we have some penetration to the glass here, and that's it. Because the water cement ratio is super high, uh, the water cement ratio was 0.7, very high, because my compressive strength was almost uh, 3,000. And then, by using this, make sure that you don't have extra concrete, and then weigh it. So the weight of the concrete in the container 
that I know the volume of it is 51.05. And uh, you can, you have the weight of the concrete, you have the volume of the concrete. You can just simply divide it and calculate the unit weight of the concrete. Okay, so the, the volume of the steel bucket is one third of a foot, 0 0.33 three cubic foot. Okay. Uh, so you based on that you can calculate the unit weight. Okay, which is around 150 pounds per, per cubic foot of concrete. Uh, from a, a unit weight test, three layers and 25 stroke each. Okay. And with uh, water cement ratio equals 0.7, you can see the bleeding problem here. I have uh, all the water and cement on the surface and absolutely this cement should be inside the concrete. It means that I may get some uh, you know, weak points inside the concrete because of this bleeding problem. And as a last step for this experiment, I'm gonna prepare my molds and then fill them to be prepared for the compressive strength test. I just need to introduce oil a little bit to the inner part of the mold, not too much, just to make sure that we would not have problem when we want to get out the sample out of the mold. And tomorrow, after 24 hours, I need to come back and take them out with the compressed air, make it easier. So again, for pouring concrete into molds, I need to do it in three layers. Again, vibrate it. So I'm gonna show you one sample. I can use the same concrete again. I also have more concrete in the mixer. So for 18 molds, I have enough of concrete. So again, in three layers, this time uh, 15 strokes. So the concrete is fluible enough, so we don't need that much effort to compact it. For the second layer, and the last layer, Make sure that you have excess of concrete on top of the mold because when you compact it, it goes down. This concrete is fluible enough, but if you have concrete, if you, you're working with a concrete with a lower slump, like zero slump or a below two inches of slump, you need to put your samples on the shaking table that I introduced it in the introduction. So just flat it. And this, this one is fluible enough, but uh, you can use uh, you know hammer to tap side of your molds a little bit. Because uh, you know after you take it out, you will see nice and smooth you know surface. But do not vibrate the concrete uh, with high slump because again the bleeding problem. And that's it for today. So one more time, I'm gonna take all the samples out of the molds and prepare it for a seven day compressive strength. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so that's the demo for today's lab. Okay, we measure uh, 
uh, the raw materials weight and we mix together in the concrete mixer and we take the unit weight, uh, take the slump test and also fill the cylinders. Okay. And then the next day we're gonna demold the cylinder and we put the hardened cylinder in the curing bath until 7, 14, 21, 28 days for the strength test. Okay. So yeah, that's it for today's lab. Thank you.